Well, good morning, folks. This is Brother Peter. We are setting out this morning. The dew's heavy. We had a good rain last night. And I just felt like setting out in the garden this morning and uh, reading your little proverb this morning. And we're going to get in Proverbs 28 this morning and take a look at what the Lord has to say uh, to us in Proverbs 28 this morning. And he says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the precious are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. What he's saying here is that, that we don't have to fret, or we don't have to run and hide, we don't have to be scared of the world system today and what's happening to us. Well, the wicked man is perhaps today saying, what is going to happen to all my money? What's going to happen to everything? And they're going to run in the street like there's a great lion, and they're going to run a fright. And they'll probably be, within a few months from now, people killing themselves because they've lost all their money. And um, you cannot, you absolutely, positively, cannot go on like the United States has gone on in the last couple of years under this presidency and just ignore everything that's right and good and proper and, and everything that's even business-like and expect to not default. Now, the United States is going to default, and when it does, it's going to be terrible for those people who have everything tied up in their money. Now, it said, For the transgression of a land, many are the pre princes thereof, but a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof, shall be prolonged. Now, as I, I, I was in the hospital, did a sleep thing last night over to the hospital, experimental thing, and uh, I asked the girl, I said, the reason I'm here is not really for the sleep thing. I'm here to talk to you. Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin and come in your heart and save your soul? And she said, yes, I have. Well, I said, then you have the Holy Spirit in you, and if you do, you can understand the Word of God. If you can't understand the Word of God, then you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And that's just the way it is. The Holy Spirit wrote this book. The Holy Spirit knows the understanding of this book. The Holy Spirit is the understanding of this book. And if you don't have it in you, you don't have the understanding in you. So, it said, A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. Now, a good rain, like the rain we had last night, was a good, small, even, steady rain. It didn't tear up anything. It didn't flood out. It didn't sweep across the land, knock the trees down, beat the leaves off the bushes, and uh, uh, be a bad rain. But it was a good rain. And then it said, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law continue with them, contend with them. Now, if you are following the law of God, if you've asked Jesus to forgive you and you're following the law of God, you follow unto all the good things that are written in this proverb. And in the proverbs, uh, that's the way they are. They are positive and they are negative. There's a positive side and a negative side. Now you can live on both sides. You have to have a certain amount of negativity to have a certain amount of positivity to put them together to have a good battery. So if you want to be a good battery, you have to have some of both. So there is a good negative as well as a bad negative. Now in verse 4 it said, They that forsake the law praise the wicked. So if, you, if you're acting like the wicked, you're praising the wicked. If you forsake the law of God, and uh, then you are praising the wicked. In 5 it said, Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Now because I have been seeking the Lord for 40 years, I understand a lot of things that a lot of people in the world don't understand because they're not seeing it from a spiritual principle. Now to see things from a spiritual principle you must first be spiritual. You must first have the Holy Spirit in your heart 
in order to understand spiritual things. It's not that I'm greater than anybody else, or bigger, or higher, or anything else than anybody else. It's just that I've given myself to study and to drawing close to God, close enough to God so that when I'm dealing with people, I know the Lord is on the scene. Now, yesterday I had the opportunity of dealing with a man who has <coughs> bipolar. Now, I'm not a licensed uh, a counselor and, uh, and, and don't claim to be, but I've worked with a lot of these fellows. And um, this one here yesterday was in a real muddle, suicidal, and all kinds of problems and everything. And uh, before the day was out, I had a six hour day with him, uh, had him walking pretty straight, feeling pretty good, glad that he had, was living. And in the morning when I met him, he was wanting to commit suicide. In the afternoon, he was glad he was living and ready to go attack the world again. And so we can get in a muddle in our mind if we forsake the Lord. And this is what that man had been doing. He'd been forsaking the Lord. You can't forsake the Lord and not get in a muddle. You'll get in a muddle, whether you have bipolar or not. And uh, verse 7 said, Whosoever keepeth the law, all right, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Are you a companion to riotous men? Uh, what is a riotous man? That's a man that lives opposite to what God would have, lives opposite to what the officials would have him live, lives opposite to uh, anything that is good and pure and holy. And that's a riotous man, one who lives in rebellion. And uh, verse uh, uh, 8, He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it from the pity of the poor. Now, for years there's some things in this world I've been against. And to speak against them is perhaps not the best thing in the world. But on the other hand, I'm against these uh, pools, labor pools that we have in towns and cities like a little city near me where they get you in the door of a plant. And the plant pays them $12 an hour for you in there and they pay you $7 an hour. There's no reason in the world why it's fair or proper or even, uh, even ethical for them to make $5 an hour on you to get you in the door of a plant. And then a couple get two, three years down the road as they've got in and they've got in and they've got their foot in the door, they've made it to where you can't even go to work in a plant unless you go through them. And what they are is crooks. They're white collar crooks. And uh, one day, when judgment time comes, whether they be Christian or whether they be lost people, they're going to have a great uh, judgment come on them one day. God's going to have to judge them and judge them for their wicked works. That's a wicked thing for a man to work you and not pay you what you're worth. And uh, that's terrible. And that's the reason the country's where it is today. Uh, those fellows that are getting $12 an hour out of you and paying you seven, they know you can't live on seven, and they know they're stealing five from you. But their conscience is seared, and they don't mind doing it. So they can drive their big cars and live in their fancy houses while you go home with hardly enough to eat. Um, so, so much for that. Now we have the other criteria. That's the people that advertise the uh, title loan. You own a car and you have a little old ragged car and you got a little old ragged title and you can go get a hundred dollars on it. And those people know more than likely you'll never make enough money to buy that title back. And they'll take your car and sell it for a few dollars and put you on the street. Uh, that's not just or fair or right. And there ought to be a law against such as that. Well, our time has come and gone. We do these for 10 minutes uh, when we do them. And uh, it was good being with you for this 10 minutes. I appreciate you tuning in. And may you have a good and blessed day.